night, everybody. If you want to sit at the table, you just go ahead and sit at the table. If you want to come over here and get in the pew, you're more than likely to get in the pew. There's some songbooks that have been scattered out. Some students have been giving out some songbooks. So we're going to sing. We're going to share. We're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to be with us tonight. A lot of families in our community. Um, uh, one of our ladies at our church found her son yesterday. He had passed away. And uh, we want to remember Miss Faye uh, Miller. Um, we want to remember the Drope family, continue to pray for them and their loss and just a lot of hurt going on. I was at the hospital this afternoon and uh, a friend of mine, Mike Gamble, uh, he lives out by Miss Frida out there. Mike uh, had a major stroke, was in the hospital in Little Rock and they brought him home. I saw him last Saturday. He had to be taken back by ambulance and it's not a good situation. So a lot of hurt going on, a lot of needs. So we're going to have a time of prayer in a little bit. If you've got somebody you want to pray for, just be ready to let me know that. We're going to do that. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. Let's do a little singing. What are we going to sing, Cole? Number 119, Are You Washed in the Blood? Washed in the Blood. Right. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Let's give Josh a big hand for fixing the air, all right? Give him a hand. He's leaving. Yay, Josh. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it very much. Help. We had, he, he couldn't get here too late. He works in Jonesboro. Finally got here. Got it fixed. He went to the church, stole one of our uh, thermometers at church, stole it, just literally went in and took it, all right? But it's working, so we're glad, all right? Okay. Now let's try it again. All right, here we go. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the, blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? In the, blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? That's a great question to ask yourself tonight. To make sure before you leave, if you're not washed in the blood, not, not being baptized, not following the Lord and doing this, not going to church, are you washed in the blood? The blood has to be applied for a man to go to heaven. Come on, say amen, all right? All right, here we go. Next one. 101. Let's sing about that blood again. There is power. Power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry full of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, 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 wonder working power in the blood, in the blood of the land. Of the land. There is power, 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 wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb Would you be free from your passion and pride There's power in the blood, power in the blood Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide There's wonderful power in the blood 
There is power, power, power wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, 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 power wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, power that come on. There is power, 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 power wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the lamb of the lamb. There is power, 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 wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb. There is power, power, power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, 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 power wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Woo, I ate too much. Somebody say amen. Man, that was good. Thank you all, everybody, for bringing some goodies to eat. It was wonderful, wonderful. All right, next one. I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Now let's sing it now. Oh, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. fly away, oh, in the morning when I die, hallelujah, fly, fly, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away, fly away, like a bird from prison bars has flown. Good job. Good job. Do y'all have a favorite hymn? Now, there was a lady in the nursing home one time. I asked that song. I said, if any of you ladies got a favorite hymn, she said, I like him, and I like him, and I like him. So you guys not start that, okay? None of that, okay? But if you got one you want to sing, we'll try it, okay? If we don't know it, we'll let uh, somebody else lead it, okay? 27? Mansion over the hilltop. We know that one. Good. Got another one over here? Yes, I heard that, buddy. We'll be praying for him here in a little bit, okay? All right. I'm satisfied with 27. Just a cottage below, a little silver, and a little gold. But in that city, 
where the ransom will shine. I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet my pillow was stone and though i find here no permanent dwelling i know he'll give me a mansion my own i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wander but I walk the streets that are purest gold don't think me poor or deserted or lonely i'm not discouraged I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but I walk the streets that are purest gold. Good job. Give the Lord a hand. Good job. That's a good one there, Lightning. That's a good one. Somebody else got one. Somebody else? Going once. Going twice. How much? Amazing Grace, 203. That's a good one there. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relief how precious did that grace appear the
Let's just ask the Lord to be with us tonight. If you've got somebody to pray for, just lift your hand up. you got a prayer request, man, all over the building, man, all over the building. we got a lot of folks that are on our hearts. Uh, Miss Fay, uh, who comes to Cowboy Church, uh, uh, used to come with Miss Billy, and uh, Miss Fay called me tonight or texted me and said she's really not doing well and feeling really bad. Let's remember her in our prayers. The folks that I'd already mentioned, the Drope family, uh, let's continue to pray for um, uh, Mr. Mike Gamble. Let's pray for Miss Faye and her family. Just so many others tonight, all the hands that have been raised. Let's just ask God in his amazing, wonderful grace to reach down and put his arms around these families that are hurting. Uh, for all the folks in our nursing homes, all of those folks are that are, are shut-ins, all those that are recovering from some kind of surgery, all those that are away on vacation, or there's just a lot of things going on in our world, Lord. God, nothing more important than what we're going to do here in just a few minutes is we've all sang to you, we're praising you, we're giving you honor, but we're going to open up your word in just a little bit, and we're going to see what it has to say to us tonight. We pray that you would guide our thoughts, guide our words, and for just guide us, Lord, tonight. I pray for every need here. And if somebody here doesn't know Jesus, I pray for them tonight in a real and personal way. I pray that you'd meet that need in their home, their hearts, and their lives. Lord, this past week as we were at Bible camp for the boys and girls and preaching every night, I prayed for three things. I prayed for seeds to be sown. The Word of God would be sown in the hearts and lives of of those children who were there, that souls would be saved. And not only that, but servants would be raised up. And so we want to pray that tonight. We want to pray for seeds in our hearts. We want to pray for souls that might need Jesus. And we want to pray for servants that God would birth and bring up out of uh, a cowboy church. We're thankful. We're grateful. Tonight we have been blessed by your presence. Holy Spirit, continue to be with us and lead us. And Father, reach down into that hospital room tonight. Comfort, give them peace. May your angels watch care over those families who are struggling. Father, be with them in a really special way. Lord, we sure need you and we sure love you. And we're grateful for your love for us. Be with us now. Thank you, Lord, that you promised you'd never leave us. In Jesus' name I pray. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when. God, praise 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 God. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time, time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the same of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Come on now. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, woo! When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead of Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. 
When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called of yonder, when the roll is called of yonder, when the roll is called of yonder. When the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called of yonder, when the it's called of yonder when the roll is called of yonder. Woo! When the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. Hey, that was good. Give the Lord another hand. That's good stuff, y'all. Good job. Good job. All right, we're going to skip over number 219, The Unclouded Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away. Where the streams of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance to the unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there. And his smile drives their sorrows all away. And they tell me that no tear ever comes again. In that lovely land of unclouded day. Come on now, sing it. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. We're going to skip back number 208, uh, farther along. Tempted and tried, we all pray to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about, Understand why cheer 
my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by when death has come and taken our loved one it leaves our hope Father alone, we'll know all about it. Father alone, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brothers, live in the sunshine. We'll understand. Understand why? Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Farther along, we'll know all about. Understand why? Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Father God, we know that you see all. You know all. And God, even though that we don't understand now, we know one day we will. God, I thank you for Cowboy Church tonight. God, I thank you for uh, each and every person who has come here tonight. God, I thank you for the food that we were able to have and enjoy that fellowship time again. God, we've missed that. God, I thank you for the time of worship that we've had. Come and just sing these beautiful old hymns. God, I pray you would use Brother Kim tonight. God, give him your words to speak, but not of his own. And God, I pray if there's someone here tonight that doesn't know you, God, that they would make that relationship right before they walk out the door tonight we love you and praise you in jesus name amen amen it's good to see you tonight thank you everybody for being here like as i said uh we've been at children's camp this week and i drove up every night to uh, uh in Bowden to cedar glade baptist camp and was sharing uh in that uh, and got to preach every night and and uh, each night i tried to encourage our students and boys and girls uh, third through the sixth grade and then last night there was some parents there and i wanted to encourage them and a couple of things that i talked about was prayer some of the most important things that we do is is it for us as believers is to pray and spending time in prayer is so valuable it's so it'll help you it'll help others and, and 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 you see a lot of people don't understand prayer they don't know what prayer is it's just talking to God 
It's just talking to God. I, I appreciate Charlie after Sunday service. He came up to me and he said, Brother Kim, he said, uh, my altar is not up here. My altar is at home in my, in my office, in, my, in my, my man cave. And I said, you know what? That's a good place to have a time of prayer. That's a wonderful place. Folks, wherever you can get along with God, you and God, that's where you need to be. Say amen. Okay? And I want you to know something, how valuable that this is. But I'm going I'm to share with you one of the Apostle Paul's prayers tonight that I think is so good and so amazing for us because he prays for us uh, even in the 21st century. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to the book of Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, but it's Ephesians chapter number three, Ephesians chapter number three. In Ephesians chapter number three, uh, Paul begins to pray for the church at Ephesus. And he's praying for the church at Ephesus. He's praying for those men and women who serve the Lord. He's praying for those men and women who need a special touch from God. He's praying for those men and women who are living in the world, but yet trying to be not of the world. That's a hard thing to do, to live in the world, but yet not be of the world, to be uh, identified not with the things of the world, uh, because the Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because of the love of the world's in you, then you haven't got the love of the Father in you. So you can't, it can't mix. And so God doesn't want us to mix that. So here Paul preaches and shares with us in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15 he says of the whole family he said in heaven and earth is named he talks about the church the body of Christ the whole family I love to be a part of the family this right here I, I, I've told everybody around uh, I've got a friend of mine uh, Dr. Jimmy Sheffield that is uh, works for the Arkansas Baptist State Convention and and uh, he's praying for us tonight and and uh, I told him he said he asked me this morning he says is it Cowboy Church tonight I said it is and so he's praying for us tonight and Dr. Sheffield I, and we were talking about this I, I said this has been a breath of fresh air for me I said the only thing folks come to hear when they come here they want to eat good they want to pray good they want to sing good and they want to preach good now all, you can get three out of four the preaching may be a little weak all right but the other stuff's real good okay so I want you to know how important that, that is that the family this is our family I love you guys and I appreciate y'all and he says in verse number 16 he said that he would grant you that God the Father would grant you the believers he said, according to the riches of his glory, number one, to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man. He prays for spiritual strength. How many of you ever feel very weak spiritually? Raise your hand. You feel weak? Me too. Man, and he's praying for us, and he's asking God to give us spiritual strength. Now, guys, the way we get that spiritual strength is to be with one another, is to encourage one another, is to do life together, is to pray with one another, to pray for one another, to care about one another, to study the Word of God together, to be a part of worship together, to be a part of the family of God together. So he prays, number one, that we would have spiritual strength, an inner strength, if you will, that just absolutely encourages us to stay away from the things of the world. Now, guys, I know i got to live in this old world, but I don't have to do the things that the world says to do. We're living in a world right now that says what's right is what? Wrong. And what's wrong is what? That's right. And so the thing about it is what's so amazing about that is that we've come to accept that. We've, come to, we've stuck our head in the sand like an ostrich and come to accept it. Well, folks, understand, if you and I have spiritual strength, then it's not acceptable to the child of God to say what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Folks, what's right has always been right, and God's never changed it. Say amen. Never changed it. Never has. So tonight, I'm praying for you, as Paul prayed for you, for spiritual strength strength that you would be strong in the Lord that you would grow and you would be what God wants you to be in the Lord he says that you would be strengthened in the inner man number two verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you would have an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit for a child of God 
For a child of God, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. Remember what Jesus said. He says, I've got to go away. If I don't go away, the Comforter's not going to come. I have to go away so that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell and live and be a part of us. And so he's praying for us, not only for spiritual strength, but he's, secondly, he's praying for us for, for, if you will, the indwelling daily presence of Christ in our life. Now, that starts a, 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 as we learn more about God. That starts as we get hungrier for the Lord. That starts as we decide, hey, I, I can't get enough of this. I need more of this. I need some more of this. i got to have some more of this. I shared with the boys and girls this week at camp, the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What are you polishing on today? What are you, what are you making look good today? What are, you, what are you making sure? Is it your spiritual strength? Is it your inner man? Or is it something that the world has given us? I'm all about sports. I'm all about uh, enjoying sports. I'm all about going to the lake. I'm all about having a vacation. I'm all about uh, doing things. I'm all about working. I love to work. That's all, that's all I've ever known to do. But, a friend, I want you to know something. If we keep polishing that, then we're not polishing what God says we ought to be polishing. Say amen. Spiritual strength, inner strength. He wants us to have an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. And then he says, at the last part of verse 17, he said, you being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded. What does that mean, Brother Kim? That's just like a tree. When you get a tree and you get a tree goes down and, and you plant that tree, well, the roots start going out. We were just in uh, California, <clears throat> and we saw the giant sequoias. These giant sequoias are, I saw the oldest living thing on planet Earth was one of the large sequoia trees. The oldest living and then the second li oldest living tree. That, that dude was 60 foot plus around. It was huge. We went inside of a tree. Our, we drove our vehicle inside of one of those trees. It was, it was crazy how big that they were. But they say those root systems are so strong. And when we went to the Redwoods last fall, and we w was there in the Redwood Forest in California, those Redwoods grow in clumps. And when they grow in clumps, they're just strong. They might, part of it might break off, but another part of it will go, start growing again. It's just kind of like I told the kids at church, at church camp, I said, I had a professor when I was at Southern Baptist College, which was Williams, when I ended up graduating from. My professor, my psychology professor, the first year told me, he said, Kim, he said, I tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. My boy, I was asleep on the back row and I perked right up. Okay, what kind of a deal are we going to make? He said, if you can grow that finger back, he said, you don't have to come to class and I'll give you an A. Man, I put fertilizer on that every day. I mean, I did everything. I, I stirred it in salt water. And you know what? It never did grow. It wouldn't be like one of those trees that something happens to it, it pops up. Folks, that don't happen. It's just been that way for all these many years, and, and it's going to stay that way. So here's what I want you to get. We have to be rooted and grounded in what we say we believe. We need to know why we believe it. We need to know this is the Word of God. It's the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. And if it says it, it whether you believe it or not, it's still the Word of God. Say amen. So we rooted and grounded in love. Now, now I preach, uh, and uh, Miss Frieda told me, she said uh, uh, Monday morning when she texted me, she said, Brother Kim, I hope you spit all over the first four rows of them kids when you're preaching uh, out there at camp. And I said, me too. I, and, you know, and, 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 but, but the thing about it is we want God to speak. And I want God to speak to us. I want you to grow. I want you to be spiritually strong. And I want you to have an indwelling daily indwelling presence of Jesus Christ because you're rooted and you're grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18 says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints, all those men and women who've gone before us, all those men and women who are today, who are believers in Christ, that we may comprehend with all the saints that what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Jesus. Now, I want you to just think about that. The depth, the length, the breadth, the height, 
of the depth of the love of Jesus. Now think about that. When I begin to think about that kind of love, that kind of love supersedes my faults. It overcomes all my shortcomings. It overcomes all the things that I know that I'm going to fail at. It overcomes all of those things. Why? Because God wants me to know that my love, Kim, is greater than all of your sins. Isn't that good? Say amen. God's love is greater than those things. His love is bigger. It's stronger. He tells us to know that we may be stable. You see, what's happening in our world today, James says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He's like the sea being tossed backwards and forwards. The sea is never at rest. Even when it's calm, there's an undertow. But it goes backwards and forwards. Folks, we as Christians need to be stable in what we believe. And we know what we believe. Again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Folks, that's just plain and simple. That's just the simplicity of the love of God. So he wants us to know to be stable in our faith and in our love of Jesus Christ, stability. Then he says there in the latter part of verse 19, he said, which passes all knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. He wants you to be filled, that you could comprehend this, but to be filled. Now, uh, we, on our trip back from California driving my daughter's vehicle, the first time I stopped and bought gas for her big old, uh, they, the, the little boys, her little boys, call it Mama's Big Bus. I know why they call it Mama's Big Bus. The first time I filled up cost me $89. $4.89 a gallon in California. That's how much gas cost. I thought to myself, good night. Folks, I had to stand out on the corner and beg. I was in Winslow, Arizona, standing on the corner, begging for money so I could get home, all right? And, you know, it was sad, but gas, it was incredible. But I went to the gas pump, and, dude, I'd fill that dude up, and I'd just grin and think, man, thank you, Lord, for that credit card that I got, all right? We'll have to pay this off till next month. But, but got that dude and, and filled it up. And, you know, when I filled it up, I had peace of mind. That didn't bother me a bit, just to drive as hard as I could go, as long as I could go, as far as I could go. And on that last Thursday, and, and, and into early Friday morning, Lana and I drove 1,000 miles to get back to Marmaduke. And you know what? I only had to stop three times, twice to go to the bathroom, because I'm getting old. Can I have an amen, all right? Just because you get old. But the thing about it is, I was full. And I, I knew I was good. I knew my vehicle was going to make it. I, I was thankful and grateful. Folks, that's how we need to have a, the, the, a, the acceptance of knowing God, that he wants us to be full of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be full of the wisdom of God. He wants us to be full of his love. He wants us to know that. And then this last verse is a verse I just almost have a fit on. He says these words in verse number 20. Now unto him, that's Jesus, which... Uh, that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Folks, God can do more than we can ever imagine. Say amen. I don't know what you imagine, how big of imagination you've got, but I mean, it's incredible. God can do more. He will do more if we just let him, if we come back and are spiritually strong. If we come back and say, Lord, I want to be spirit. If we make a decision, and this is a prayer that Paul's praying for the church at Ephesus. This is a prayer that he prays for them. So I'm praying the same thing for myself, for every one of you tonight, that you be spiritually strong, that you be stable or in your faith, that you will be, have an indwelling presence of Christ, that you could comprehend the love of God and that you would understand his fullness about how that God is able. He's able. He's able to help you through these dark days. 
He's able to help us through these trying hours. I was speaking uh, to Miss Becky and Amber over there a while ago, and she asked, she said, Brother Kim, how was the first cowboy church once y'all got back in here? And this is the first time we've ate. I said, it was pretty good. I said, but you have to understand, it's affected everything. We got to start all over again, y'all. We got to start over because you know as well as I do, uh, when we said food before, they'd come to eat food and get up and leave. Wouldn't even say for the preaching, all right? But, but understand that, that the good stuff is how that we learn to love Jesus and learn about Jesus and get what Jesus needs for us. So that's my prayer for us, is that we understand that his strength comes and we draw on his strength from who Christ is, okay? We draw on that strength. And I'm so thankful tonight for what Jesus has done for me. How about you? Are you thankful? Can I have an amen? amen. Tonight, I'm praying for you for spiritual strength, for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, for stability, and that you can know beyond a shadow of doubt, God is able. Let's say that together. God is able. Let's say it again. God is able. He's able to do more than we can ask, imagine, think. I, I mean, he can, we, can, we can't even concoct something that God can't outdo. Because God's bigger than that. So tonight, as Paul prayed for these things, Paul's power and God's power came. God, Paul's power came from God. God's power is because it's unlimited. Because he's God and there's no one like him whatsoever. I love you. And if, we, if there's anything I could do for you tonight, I would just take a shovel and open up your mouth and dump this thing in your heart. Because I want you to get this. Because I want us all to grow in the knowledge of the Word of God. To grow together. Because outside here, outside the walls of this building, there's a lot of people who need Jesus. But they don't know Jesus. And the folks, I, I was reading this afternoon, there's 7.8 billion plus people in our world today. That's, B with the, that's billion with a B. Not million, but billion. And over 2 million of those, 2 billion of those people have never heard the name Jesus. And the Bible said in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's not another name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. you got to know that name. So what's that tell me about us? we got to get this so we can go out there and so we can tell them out there. Say amen. That's my prayer for you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, thank you tonight for the word of God. Thank you tonight that your love is greater than everything. Father, thank you tonight that you are able. Thank you tonight that you're able to do more, that you're able to do more than we can ever ask, imagine, or think. God, thank you that you're able to do more beyond what I can, can ask you, Lord, that you could, I'm going to dream big. So, Lord, I'm going to dream that you start growing us as believers in Christ, that you start doing something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves, Lord. I'm going to ask you, Lord, to meet these needs tonight. Lord, I thank you for these precious folks that have gathered here. Lord, as we've rallied together tonight to come and to have a wonderful meal, as we've rallied together to sing and give you praise, and we've rallied together tonight to know that Satan can be defeated and that we believe that there is one God. And there is one God that loves the world, those 7.8 billion people that are living here in planet, on planet Earth. So God, please help us, burden us, that we would have a desire to have spiritual strength, that we would have a desire to have an indwelling daily presence of Christ, that, Lord, we would have a stability in our faith, that we would know who we are and know the love of Christ, that we could comprehend of your amazing love, that we would be filled with the fullness of God and know, Lord, you're able to do every bit of that and more. Thank you. Thank you tonight for your word. Now, guys, if the altar's open, if you need to come and just say, Lord, here I am. I'm praying for that. I'm praying, Lord, for my friends, my family, my husband, my wife, my brother, my sister, whatever it is. I'm praying for me, God. Altars are open if you want to come. Cole's going to sing. You just keep your head bowed and eyes closed as Cole sings tonight. There is a name. I love to hear it. Father, just meet our needs. You've heard our cries tonight from our hearts if they've been silent. You've heard our cries verbally. 
the sweetest name on earth. Sing it, y'all. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love him? Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. One more time, let's sing that. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Oh, give the Lord a hand, everybody. God bless you. Thank you tonight for being here. We appreciate you so very much. We're going to meet again July 1st, okay? July 1st is when we're going to meet again. I know that may be a bad night. and Y'all may be in the vacation zone. I don't know where you're going to be, but it'll be Thursday night, July 1st. And we're going to come back. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Whoever shows up, we're going to just have a good time, all right? We're going to have a great time. Thank you for being here. We love you. We appreciate you. Don't forget the silver buckets. Got to pay a few bills. We need to help out here. We've got some things coming up. We've had to buy some equipment. And, uh, but we love you. Thank you, everybody, for the great meal. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a good night. You're dismissed, everybody. Thanks so much.